everybody come in, find your seats, find your seats. It's chapel day. Who's ready for chapel? Woo! Yes. That's good. Thank you, Micah. He's got the, the young soul with the energy. Thank you, Micah. Okay, just a couple announcements before we start um, worship this morning at chapel. Just a few reminders, um, just about some of the standards here of chapel. So if we could just listen very quickly. Um, please try your very best not to have to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Um, it's pretty distracting when somebody has to get up and move through the rows and everyone's like, oh, now I can't see, and then has to go over there. Um, so please try your best. If you can hold it, just go right after chapel um, quickly and then get to your third hour. Another thing is please, no phones throughout chapel. Um, and uh, even if you're taking notes, okay? So we would, we would rather you take notes on paper um, or a journal, um, but not your phone, okay? So if we see your phone, we will have to take it. No AirPods either, okay? So not, I'm, a lot of kids think because you have long hair, we can't tell, or you put a hood up. Please make sure we're listening, we're giving God the glory in this space for the 45 minutes that we're in here, okay? What's another announcement, Micah? Next up, we have the importance of being earnest. That is coming up this Woo! week. I know, everyone is so excited for it. Um, that'll be showings Friday. Um, and Saturday this week. So it'll be Friday at 6.30. Um, students will have ticket costs at $8, I believe, and adults at $10. Doors will open 30 minutes before, so 6 o'clock, and then Saturday the show will be at 2, same prices and everything. Um, it'll be right outside, right over here. Um, yeah. It's in the lobby? It, yes, it will be right oh, outside. Oh, great, perfect. So come here this weekend. Make sure you go and support um, and then lastly, we are starting a new series for the next three weeks. So I just want to, wanted to introduce it. We are going to be talking about the book of James. We have three of our very own staff members here that will be speaking. I'll maybe save the announcement for today. But next week will be Principal Wright. And then we have Mr. Langley bringing the word. So it's going to be a great three weeks. So we're very excited. But why don't you guys stand up um, and then I'm going to pray. So why don't we stand up and we're going to pray for worship. So dear God, we thank you so much. God, we just pray for this worship set. We pray for chapel today. We pray for our speaker that you just use him in your mighty ways, God. We just want to glorify you with everything we do. So we just want to, we just want to praise you. And in your name, amen. All right, COS, how are we doing this morning? Are we good? Yeah. All right, if you're good, come on down to the front. It's time to worship. Get down here. We're going to mosh. I'm kidding. No, we're not. But get down here.
got a revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the water, holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminded of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my dead left for death beneath the water And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I know and I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grave that holds nobody. Now the power lives. Another in the fire. Whoa. 
Yes, Jesus, we just thank you just for who you are and what you do for us each and every day. God, we just thank you that you are the king on the throne and that no matter what mountain, no matter what fire, no matter what thing is going on in our life, if it's an addiction, if it's anxiety, if it's just something that maybe we're hiding or something that just is in front of us each and every day, every morning we wake up and we think of this one thing. God, I just pray that we have a perspective change this morning that we can begin to see how big and powerful you are compared to the problems that we face each and every day. So God, I just pray for open ears this morning as we talk about trials and as we talk about the hardships in our life. God, I just pray that we begin to just receive what the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. Let us again have open ears, open hearts for what you have. So we thank you and in your name we say, amen. Can we give it up for the worship team for leading us this morning? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am very, very excited about today's speaker. It's going to be a great and a powerful message. So again, just as I was saying in the prayer, let us have open ears and open hearts this morning. Don't tune out because I fully believe that the Holy Spirit has given a word to our speaker this morning Um, And I really believe that God wants to move in our lives. Let this just not be another just normal chapel this morning, okay? So for, I'm just going to introduce him. So can I have Mr. Caputo come on out? I love the enthusiasm. It's, it's, thanks guys. Uh, Hey, let's uh, start off with a word of prayer. I, I need prayer. Let's pray. God. God, you are good, and you are faithful, you are merciful, and God, you love us, and I just thank you for that. As we dive into your word today, God, I pray that you would speak through me. 
uh, as we enter into the realm of this difficult topic of trials, God, I pray that it would not be my wisdom or my words, my power, but God, truly that you would just speak your will to us and that we would be changed. And more importantly, God, that you would be glorified through this. And so, God, we just pray that your name would be elevated, that you would be seen as the great one. God, we thank you for all that you do and all that you will do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, I, I just like, I'm going to get into things, guys, right, right off the start. And so no fun stories or anything like that. Uh, but real quick, let me just introduce this series. We're going to be going through a series, like Mr. Short said, on the book of James. If you have your Bible today, we're in James chapter 1. Way to go for those of you who brought it. Uh, as we go through the next three weeks, we'll be talking about trials. We'll be talking about wisdom and faith and works. And so uh, we have some really exciting stuff for you guys. Trials, wisdom, faith, and works. And so these are the next uh, three things that we're going to be looking at. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about trials specifically. James is like a very, very practical book. Like it just gets like right into things. It's like this is how it is. This is how you should live. This is what you should do. And if anyone in here has ever gone through a trial... Uh, this is a rhetorical question, but have you ever gone through a trial? The answer is uh, a resounding yes. Like all of us have gone through trials. And if you have gone through trials, and this is a book that has good content for you today. Uh, and before we jump into the text in just a second, let me just be upfront with you at the beginning. Like this isn't an easy thing for me to talk about. I actually like I was really challenged with writing this message. And so just transparency at the beginning, like my goal today, it's not to entertain you. It's also not to bore you, but that's not my goal. Like, like I don't care how you feel about this message. I care that the word is being presented correctly, right? My goal isn't even to encourage you, and my goal isn't to discourage you. My goal is to present the word of God correctly. Like, that, that's all I care about. And because I'm talking about trials, I might say a few things that some of you are like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound right, but I'm going to use the Bible, and you can interpret that and read it along with me and see how it goes. And so let's not waste any time and just jump into James chapter 1. We're going to read the, the verses that we're talking about all together and then I'll kind of break them down. And so James 1 verse 2 says this. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you might be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing, lacking in nothing. What a verse. Like, like there's so much content here. Uh, let's start off, uh, if we're going to break this down, if you just want to put verse 2 up there. I want us like, to really get through this today. Uh, verse 2, it starts off addressing a specific group of people. It's talking about brothers. Now, like when it says brothers, what does that mean? This is pretty much an informal way of saying to the believer, to the Christian. If you are a Christian in this room today, if you have put your faith in Jesus and are trusting in him for the salvation of your soul, then the content that we read today is for you. It's not just for the believer 2,000 years ago. It is for uh, the believer then and the believer every single moment up until now and every single person who will put their faith in Jesus. This is for you. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various Kinds. And this is such an important distinction to make too, guys, because here's the thing. Christians will naturally respond to difficulty. Christians will naturally respond to trials differently than the rest of the world will. Like the work that God has done in our life, the spirit of God moving in us, makes us act differently than the people around us. And so like what we read today is something special that is available to us who have put our faith in Jesus but what are we being told to do? What are we Christians being commanded to do? It says this, what count it all joy, Christians, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now, this is where I struggled the most, actually, in my writing. Like, I was like, I, I honestly, I don't even think I could tell you how many times I read this verse. Because this is what it says. It doesn't say, count it all joy, my brothers, if you meet trials of various kinds. It says what? When? You meet trials of various kinds. Because here's the harsh reality. We live in a world that has been broken and distorted and corrupted by sin. In every single one of us in this room, whether we have currently or are currently, we will go through trials. Like this is an unavoidable fact of reality. Like we live in a world that is broken. But that's not the part that I struggled with writing. Because like I think all of us can agree like yeah, the world it's rough at times. The part that I struggled with writing is this. 
The Bible only gives us one response to trials as believers. There is a single response that we are called to have. And what is it? Count these trials as joy. This is our call to the troubles and the hardships in our life. Consider it joy. If I were to give you guys like my own wisdom or my own experience, I could probably come up with a million different ways to respond to trials. Maybe not a million. Hyperbole. Ask Ms. Picaro, right? Uh, I could give you a, a million different ways of how I could respond to trials. But my opinion, like I said at the beginning, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what the Bible teaches. There is one way to respond to trials, and that is by considering than joy. This idea is actually not just found in James. If you're like, well, that's just kind of a weird verse that just shows up right here. No, I have a slide real quick. If you put it up uh, and, and like there's a, a slide full of verses in every single one of these verses. And this isn't like an entirety. This is just a couple. I just looked it up for like literally five minutes. Like how do we respond to trials? Google all of these. Every single one of these is saying the exact same thing. When you suffer, celebrate. When you go through hardship, praise God. When you're in trials, find joy. Like this is the Christian response to trials. And I know it doesn't make sense, but it actually does make sense if you keep reading the Bible. Because we're going to see what it says. And so let's look. Um, trials. Enjoy them. Just kidding. Well, not really. Actually, I'm not kidding. Like that's what the Bible says. Let's talk about what trials are. Uh, I don't normally get into, like, the Greek when I'm talking. Like, like that's not, I don't know, it's just not who I am. Like, I'm talking to high schoolers and middle schoolers. I don't need to get into the Greek too much. Uh, but today, I think this is a valuable time for us to understand, like, what this word trials means. Uh, and so what does trials mean? It comes from this word called, uh, called pirosmos. Pirosmos. It's, say it with me. Pirosmos. This is what trials are. Uh, and the word itself is kind of this like all-encompassing idea of difficulty. Uh, pirosmos. And so what could pirosmos be? It could just be the hatred that you endure for loving Jesus. Like people are like, oh, you chose to follow Jesus. Well, now I hate you. And maybe I'm going to say things to you that are mean. Maybe I'll do things that are mean. Maybe I might actually hurt you because you've chosen to follow Jesus. Pirosmos. Pirosmos isn't just the, the, I guess, ridicule and the persecution that we could experience as believers. Pirosmos is also just the struggle that we might be going through in our battle against sin itself. And so Pirosmos is like, I want to do good, God. I want to love you, Jesus. But like this part of me, it just desires evil. And I don't like to admit it, but like there's something in me that's just wrong. Pirosmos. Perhaps the Pirosmos that most of you are familiar with, though, is just suffering. Like, like pure osmos, like I said, all-encompassing. Maybe it's just you're going through a bad day. Pure osmos. Maybe uh, you feel alone. Maybe you're just going through, like, the, the ringer. Like, it's, like, the worst day you've ever experienced. Maybe people hate you. Maybe you feel like you can't do good enough. Maybe there's a million lies being shouted in your head. I don't know what it is, but your pure osmos, your suffering, your trials, like, this is it. And in all pure osmos... In all suffering, we have but one response, and that is to count it as joy. The thing about joy, though, and I think this is important that we understand this, is that joy is not happiness. Right? A lot of times, I think young people and even old people, like, we can mix these words up and be like, well, wait, God's commanding me to be happy when I'm going through some of the worst moments of my life? No, that's not what God is doing. God is telling you to find joy. Let me explain to you. There's a difference between these two words. Happiness is based on circumstance. When things are going well, when you're getting everything you want, when you're like, yes, 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 like I just won something. I don't know. I don't win too much, and so I can't experience that with you. All right, but uh, like, like that is happiness. And then when things start going wrong... You're like, oh, I was hoping for this, and I got literally the exact opposite. Like, when you come to school in the morning without your computer and notes, and you have to drive back, right? Like, like that's a true story. Anyway, uh, right? Like, <laughs> that's what happiness is, and that's what unhappiness is. But joy is not a product of your circumstance. Let me explain this. Joy is a product and a byproduct of your relationship with Jesus. 
Joy is this God-ordained, God-instilled peace and comfort and hope that only comes from Jesus. And what God is saying here is when you go through trials, find joy. Why? Because you have me. When you're going through the hardest moments of your life, you can still move forward because you have something in you that pushes you forward unlike any happiness ever could. Joy is not based on what is going on around you. Joy is based entirely on Jesus. This is why the believer can have joy in all trials. I want to talk a little bit more uh, about the next verse really quick. Verse 3. It says this, it says, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, if you have the verse. Why is it that we find joy in trials? Why is it that we can move on like other people can't? Because the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. Uh, Some translations of the Bible, instead of saying steadfastness, they would just say something called perseverance. They both mean the same thing, to be steadfast and to persevere. Same idea, same concept. And so what is it? That just means that through hardship and through suffering and through temptation and through the worst moments of your life, when your life is being shaken, literally everything is falling apart, you can keep going. Why? Because you are on a foundation that is unshakable, that you are on a foundation named Jesus. And as a steadfast faith is built, you will see that your faith will mature in ways that you never could have imagined before. Like this is, this is what the Bible teaches. It says, when you are tried, when you suffer, as you count it joy, your faith will be built and matured in ways that you could have never imagined before. When you find joy in the suffering, you will be built into the person that God is causing you to be, that he desires you to be, because what? Because your hope isn't on the circumstances that are around you. Your hope is on Jesus. I honestly believe that it's through our trials that our faith will be developed the most. Like, like some of you could be like, yeah, that time that I went through a while ago, like, that changed me. And some of you can look at that change and be like, yeah, as much as I hate to admit it, the change that this brought in my life was good. Like, this is the joy in trials. I want to share a story with you guys, my own life, super quick, uh, not a long one, just a way that God matured my life through some trials. Um, I don't really like talking about my weakness too much either, so I was like, ah, I don't like this. But I I think God can be glorified through this, and I just want to give you guys just like some firsthand experience, like, yeah, God does work in trials. Uh, So so here it is. Uh, Last month, September, Pretty much, yeah, I really haven't talked about this to anyone, but, like, September was probably one of the worst months of my life, like, last month. Like, it was a tough month. Like, wow. Uh, The very beginning of the month, uh, like, the first week of the month, like, I started experiencing some, like, wicked chest pain. Like, I was like, what is going on? Like, it started off just this dull throbbing, but then it would just, like, it's so bad. Like, I literally couldn't even think. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, God, like, what is happening to me? I've never had heartburn before. And I was like, is this heartburn? Uh, like, is it actually that bad? I was, I was confused. Um, me being the smart or stupid person that I am, though, I was like, you know, this is what I'll do. I'll just <laughs> tough it out. Um, that's never a smart idea. Uh, but that's what I ch- decided to do. Uh, and that wasn't a good idea because it just got worse and worse. Um, I'm not kidding when I say for a solid three weeks, the pain was like so bad. Like you guys didn't see it because I don't like to complain. Uh, But the pain was so bad. I promise you like the only thing on my mind, like in class and at home and when I was trying to sleep is like, this hurts. Like, like, I'm like, wow, what is going on? I I stopped sleeping. It was so bad. Um, I'm like, I'm not joking. The entire month of September, the average amount of sleep I got was like one to three hours a night. Uh, there were probably five or six nights, no sleep at all. Like it was, it was a lot. I was stressed out. It started getting into my mind. Like I, like I hate to admit it, it literally started to like break me down. Like there would be nights I would just like cry out to God. I'm like, God, why are you doing this? I'm like, I'm 31 years old. God, that's, that's young-ish, right? You guys, some of you are like, that's young, and some of you are like, that's old. You'll figure it out one day. Uh, I was like, I, I'm too young, God. Why is this going on? But the thing is, like, during this entire ordeal, like, like 
the sleepless nights, the pain, the constant distraction. I knew I would actually be speaking about trials today, like in this moment, and I had already begun to study through James. I'd already begun to study, like, what does God desire for me in trials? And so I did what the Bible said. I said, God, help me to find this as joy. Show me the joy in this suffering, Jesus, because I don't get it. Like, I really don't get it. And do you know what God did? He started to show me, show me the joy in suffering. I began to realize that every single breath I took was a precious moment given to me by God. I began to realize that the things that really mattered in life was God and nothing else. And my, my thinking started to shift. Like the Bible says, it perseveres you. It makes you steadfast. Like I started to mature in my faith uh, last month in a way that I hadn't seen in a while. Like I started to pray with an urgency that I haven't seen in a, like in quite a bit. I started to read my Bible in a way that I hadn't been reading it before. Because stuff just changes when you're, like, when you're hurting. Netflix didn't matter, social media or any media didn't matter. I was like, what value is there in this? And God started to mature my faith, and I can honestly look at last month, and I can stand here before you and say, like, 100% truthfully, like, praise God that I only got a couple hours of sleep every night for a whole month. Praise God that I hurt so bad that I couldn't think. Why? Because that pain matured my faith and brought me to a place where I love Jesus more today than I did back then. Like, to summarize the story really quick, just I won't leave you on a cliffhanger. I ended up, like, literally the last Friday of the month, it was just, like, anxiety alert. I was like, ah, I can't do it. I went to the ER. Um, it was apparently some weird side effect of COVID that messed with my heart. Like, that's what it was. And so it wasn't anything too crazy. They gave me some medicine. And I feel a lot better today. Uh, but... Uh, I'm just saying this, like, I don't want you guys to think, wow, Mr. Caputo, like, dealt with that, right? I probably could have dealt with it better. I just want to share this with you guys because it's possible to find joy in trials in some really difficult moments. It's possible to honor God in trials and in the hardship. And when you do that, God will mature your faith faster in ways that you could have never imagined possible. Uh, even at the ER, fun story, I found a lady there who was going through it way worse than I was. I was able to share the gospel with her, and now she's going to church with my mom. And it's like just some, like, crazy stories come together uh, when you choose to follow Jesus in the hardship. And I think this is important to understand because at the end of the day, every single one of us in this room will have to decide how do we respond to trials. Like you, sitting in your chair right now, how will you respond to your trials, parosmos? Whether it's the persecution, the struggle against sin, whether it's just the suffering that you endure. How will you respond to your trials? James chapter 1 verse 4, it kind of closes it out with this. It says, and let steadfastness or perseverance have its full effect that you might be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. This verse connects to James chapter 1, verse 12, which talks about the crown of life. And essentially what it's saying is that the end result of your faith, the end result of your trials, the end result of your hardship as a believer is eternity with Jesus. You see, our hope can't be built in the here and now. It can't be built on the temporary stuff. Our hope is in a person that does not change, that does not move. He is the one who always is there. Our hope is in Jesus. And yeah, God can help with some trials. And, and, and he does a lot of times help with the stuff that's going on here and now. But if your only hope is that here and now would get fixed, you are missing the point. Because our hope is in eternity. Because there will be a day when we will stand before God and as his people will say, welcome into my family. And on that day, we will not experience suffering or trials. And on that day, there will be no more war and there will be peace and we will find hope and we will live in the way that Jesus has called us to live. But our hope is in eternity. And some people miss that so much. Our hope isn't just for now. Yeah, God does help the here and now. He's so good and he loves us. 
But the promise that God makes is that our hope would be forever with Jesus. I don't want you guys to miss that. If this is the case, if we have an eternal hope, then the one conclusion that we can come to, as weird as it sounds, is that whatever it takes, however much it hurts, if it points us to Jesus, then we can count it as joy. Because nothing matters more than Jesus. The trials that I went through, like, like they, were, they were rough, but a lot of people go through trials way worse than I do. I want to share a story with you um, about this hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, and, and we'll be close to finishing with this. Uh, the song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, uh, it's an old hymn, about 150 years old, and it's a powerful hymn. Uh, you see the way that somebody responded to some of the worst hardships in life, and I, I'll just share it with you. So 150 years ago, and I want to read it so I don't mess it up, a group of missionaries, they went to northeast India so that they could share the gospel. They went to an area that was undergoing harsh persecution. They did not want to see Christianity spread. And so these missionaries, they started sharing the gospel. This is who Jesus is. He loves you. He died for you. He wants you to know him and be in relationship with him. And as they were sharing the gospel, one family, a dad, a mom, and their two kids, they put their faith in Jesus. This family started to share the gospel with others, and, and more and more people began to know God. But the village chief, he was not happy with this because he didn't like that somebody else was getting attention that he thought he deserved for himself. And so what he did is this. He said, you guys, this family, the mom, dad, kids, like, there's something wrong with you, and you're going to stand trial before the entire village. And so he brought the entire family to the center of the village. He brought all of villagers together, and he said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to renounce your faith today. You're going to say that Jesus isn't it, that he doesn't matter, or I'm going to take your life. And so this man, standing before the village by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is what he said. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. And the chief, he was so mad, he took the life of his kids right there before him. After he saw this happen, the chief, he, he looked at the man again and he said, what about your wife? Will you renounce your faith for your wife? And the man's response was just a single line. He said this, he said, though no one joins me still, I will follow. And before his very eyes, he saw his wife murdered in front of him. One more time, the chief asked, and he said, for your own life, will you renounce your faith in Jesus and turn away from him forever? And then he said this, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. And then the man's life was taken in front of the entire village. Like, this is the hardship and the persecution that we see the church enduring so often. And what happened after that was legitimately a miracle. Because the chief, he said, these people have a faith that I don't understand, and I want it for myself. And so, literally, after he got done murdering this family, he said, now I choose to follow Jesus. That was literally what he did. And upon the chief's confession of faith, the entire village put their trust in Jesus, and they were saved. And then countless thousands more and more were saved, and eventually millions would come to know the hymn that was written in response to this person's words. I have decided to follow Jesus. I want you guys to just think for a moment. That man, he suffered immensely, but now he and his family are with Jesus in paradise forever. Your pain and my pain, our pain, like, it has purpose. And God will use it to bring himself glory. And God will use it to shape us into the people that he wants to be. But we have a choice. Do we choose Jesus in the midst of our pain? Do we choose to count it joy? Or do we try to figure it out on our own? If you guys are back there, you can come up. We're going to sing a song really quick and then be done. We have a choice to make in the way that we respond to pain. 
and I'll just say this real quick, like teachers, this is for you to guess, like everyone, like this is for me, this is for all of us, this isn't just a student thing, this is a human thing, like we have a choice, how do we respond to pain? How do we respond to trials, to parasmos? Do we run to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith? Do we trust in him? Do we find joy in our suffering and allow him to mature us into the men and women that he wants us to be? Or do we just try to figure it out ourselves and put some temporary solution onto something that isn't going to last? What we're going to do really quick, just for like three more minutes, I'm going to give us a chance to respond. Uh, We're going to sing the song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Let's follow the example of a man who gave up everything for the sake of Jesus, who found hope in his trials and chose to do what God had called him to do. And so this is how we'll respond. I I really don't want to, like, make you guys stand up or come forward. I'll just say this. Respond how you want. If you want to sit and pray, sit and pray. If you want to stand and sing, stand and sing. But choose today. How will you respond to the trials in your life? Will you consider them joy? Or will you run away and get mad at God and say, God, this isn't what I want. Don't work in me like this. Just what's your choice? And so we're going to sing this song. I'll pray. And then we'll be done. So God, speak to us. God, help us to live the way that you have called us to. God, in all trials, in all suffering, in all difficulty, God, let us consider it joy, not because that's a natural response, but because that is a supernatural response that comes from you and you can enable in that or that in us. God, let us be people who choose joy against all odds and may you be glorified in it. God, the suffering and the trials that are happening in this room today, I pray that you would enable us to trust you to a greater capacity. And may our faith be matured in you as only you can do. And so, Jesus, we trust in you. We choose you. We love you. And we just ask that you would be glorified in all hardship. And we pray this in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys choose how to respond. Yes, God, that is our prayer this morning, that there is never a time where we turn, turn our backs on you, no matter what trials, 
no matter what things happen in our life. God, we just pray that we can have the faith that this man had, that no matter what the devil throws at us, no matter what even our friends throw at us or these lies that we hear, God, I just pray that we can remain faithful and choose joy each and every day. So we thank you for this timely word by Mr. Caputo. And God, I just pray that as we go on today that we can remember this song and we can remember the faith of this man. And we can know that we can have the same faith through the power of Jesus because we're not living for this world, but we're living for eternity. So we thank you, Jesus. And in your name, we say amen. So before you go, before you go, if there is a trial or if there is something that maybe you are going through, maybe there is something that you are struggling with, go find a teacher and let us partner with you and pray with you so that you can have that joy. So thank you so much. If you guys can quickly head to your third hour. We have some reflection questions, so please make sure we head there sooner than later.